Romulans. Uh, joining me now is one of the legislators at that hearing, former senator and one-time presidential candidate, the one and only Mike Gravel, who represented the great state of Alaska for 22 years. Senator, welcome. What a pleasure it is to have you on Viewpoint. Thank you for having me. Thank you, sir. So let me start with the most obvious question. What got you involved in this particular hearing? Well, I was approached, uh, first off, I'm uh, like any other citizen who's well read. Uh, I followed uh, the uh, UFO, uh, uh, the ET uh, issues uh, casually. Uh, but I was approached uh, two weeks ago uh, if I would be part of this hearing. And I sort of blew it off because I didn't really understand what the hearing was about. And I had other plans. But then uh, another person who I had respect for uh, briefed me more fully on what the hearing was about. And then I thought it would be an opportunity for me to spend one week and, of course, preparation before the hearing uh, to become very knowledgeable about this subject, which is probably the most significant subject in our entire civilization because it, it juxtaposes whether or not uh, there's a, a force out there uh, that we can identify with these sightings of saucers, you call it, whatever, uh, and that that force uh, is, is observing uh, the planet. And uh, I've now, uh, after the testimony and the research uh, that I've done, uh, I think that this hearing is extremely worthwhile and there's no question about it that the government of the United States is in total denial of this. And of course, we've had several smoking guns uh, to show that this denial is ridiculous. Well, you're not the only one who thinks that, sir. And of course, I appreciate uh, any Americans who go about investigating this. I think it is a significant issue that too often the media cynically writes off as just a joke. Uh, I'm wondering, is this common to have independent citizen groups invite former legislators to come and, and do a congressional style hearing? And did your experience, sir, in the Senate uh, serve you well in preparation for this? Well, certainly my experience in the Senate uh, did, did serve me well. And of course, the other five uh, members uh, of the House uh, certainly add to it. So we all have, in fact, I think the number is, it's about 80 years of legislative experience on our side of the table. But we're all retired uh, from public office, and yet we're, we're obviously citizens interested in uh, the, the public in, uh, the public issues involved so the so it's uh, the first knowledge I have uh, that's why I didn't understand initially of this kind of a format the reason for the format was that uh, the group that's putting it on is the paradigm research group uh, they wanted to be able to uh, see if this if they could shame the Congress so to speak into having a hearing like this I personally don't think it's going to happen. Uh, I think the Congress is, is not going to be interested in a subject like this. There's no political benefit uh, and there's political risk involved. So, but there's a new direction that this should go in. And this should go in towards a, a global, a, a global, because this is a global issue, not mm -hmm. just an American issue. The American government is the one that's most irresponsible in handling the subject, but it's a global issue and we should have uh, the United Nations, the General Assembly, uh, form an agency and have a, a global uh, conference of scientists that would focus on the issues involved. Sir, how specifically is the American government irresponsible in handling this issue? Well, first off, you get the White House. Well, they don't know anything about it. Uh, there's nothing that they won't have any files. Well, that's an outright lie. Uh, whether it comes from uh, who in the White House or the president. What, and, and of course what happens is all the way down the chain of command, uh, they keep the cover up. Now the cover up started with what happened in Roswell, where a spacecraft, a uh, flying saucer, what have you, crashed and apparently there were four uh, humanoids or whatever, whatever mm -hmm. uh, that, that died or perished in, in that event. And right after uh, that happened, uh, within hours, uh, the general involved, the General Ramey, uh, took charge of it and just began to get shut everything down. It's classified, intimidating ev anybody and everybody that was involved, intimidating them and getting a lot of military personnel to sign non-disclosure agreements. Now, that's who we have been interviewing these last three days, and we got two more days uh, to interview 
military personnel who were on the scene, who give direct first-hand testimony, and then the researchers and the scholars that have devoted their time and energy. So you got military personnel as high-ranking as lieutenant colonels mm -hmm. and, and full bird colonels mm -hmm. and, uh, and scholars uh, who are steeped in the field and who have written numerous books on the subject. Well, Senator, I do appreciate you and your fellow legislators using your celebrity and renown to draw attention to this issue to pressure Congress to at least start talking about it. But I have to ask, are some of the other former Congress members just picking up a paycheck for this thing, or do you think they're genuinely concerned? No, they're generally concerned. I, well, first off, uh, the paycheck, the, the, stop and think. It's uh, five, uh, five days, uh, nine to five every day. So it, it's not what you call uh, a high salary situation. But they covered all the expenses and it's just reasonable. You know, you get the pundits that go out and speak uh, uh, and get $30,000, 40000 50000 or a Henry Kissinger who gets a hundred and some odd thousand dollars a speech, or Ronald Reagan who goes to Japan and gets, what, $2 million mm -hmm. for uh, one speech. So the, the, the money is incidental. Uh, clearly, uh, unless you're well endowed, and I'm not, and I, didn't, I don't think any of the other uh, persons uh, would be what I call wealthy. No, they're public citizens who have served uh, and, uh, and realized that this issue, and they came in very s skeptically. Mm -hmm. uh, there was nobody who was co overwhelmingly convinced that this was a, a legitimate issue, uh, fearful of the issue, because as you know, mainstream media by and large tries to marginalize people yes, and, they do. and call them a little kooky. And Indeed well, they I was do. interviewed right off the beginning, and a person said, Well, Senator, what, uh, what, tell us about the little green men. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't know any little green men. And, and it was demeaning, and I was able to bring the person around. Because what's at issue here is something we don't know and that the government would cover it up. Now, we know why the government's covering it up, because we have several smoking guns. Uh, and I'll give you one of them as an example. With the missile silos in Montana, uh, the Dakotas, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, one other state, Wyoming, uh, whenever there was one of these air, uh, these call them flying saucers, for right. lack of a better word, uh, hovering above, above the silo, the missiles were unlaunchable. Yes, we mentioned now, that in our in our introduction to the segment. Well, I'll tell you right off the bat, the, the military would go bonkers over that because what it shows is that after spending a trillion dollars on this unbelievable defense system, when push comes to shove, it doesn't work. Mm -hmm. so obviously, they want to keep that secret. But the nature of the military in this country and the nature of those in power, the leaders, is that they have a perception totally towards secrecy and to keep things covered up. And that's very sad because if we're to be an operating democracy, the people have to know what's going on. And since this thing is of civilized planetary import, the people of the world should know what's going on. Most countries have Absolutely. been much more revealing on this subject, but the United States is the dark hole in this regard. Well, sir, I'm sorry we're out of time for this, but it's a pleasure to have you talking about it, an issue many Americans care about. Former Senator Mike Ravel, thank you for talking to us, and uh, I want to tell you what a pleasure it was watching you debate for president back in 2008. <laughs>